Okay, welcome on in, and I'm showing you footage from Marble Falls, Texas. I hope y'all enjoy it. I showed footage in the last video. I hope you got to catch it. If you didn't, I'll put the link for the video at the very end of this one, but um, we are going to talk about the full moon in Libra on April 5th, 2023, and Instead of, you know, seeing me, you're going to see the beautiful sights. I know some of you like to see me live. I will, you know, show my face again. <laughs> um, but right now, I just want to talk about the energy. Let's take in the sights. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll put a little pop-up random messages on the screen just to give you context of, you know, if you're curious about what you're looking at. But... That said, let's get into the astrology because I'm pretty sure that's the main reason why most of you are here. Let's set the tone by thinking about what happened the last new moon in Libra, which was September of last year. So what started at that time? And it would be relationships oriented. It would be something that is now culminating coming into completion or fruition or balance and might be something that you're having to now release that was started at that time maybe now you're finding you need to set yourself free from it or let it go and you know on an emotional level you could find yourself reflecting on what was started September of last year with these relationship issues did it hold you back in some way or did it just simply not move you forward in the way that you hoped or thought right because that was a time of new beginnings in September of last year and when we have new beginnings we're brimming with hope we're brimming with optimism we're looking at the possibilities the potentials but now that we find ourselves at the end of that cycle did it live up to everything that you hoped it would have? And if not, what have you learned from this experience? So let's put this into context with this current energy. Over the last two weeks, we've been coming off of that new moon in Aries. This is a year where the nodes are shifting into Aries and Libra. And... That means we're coming into, you know, an eclipse in Aries next month in April. So all this Aries energy implies self versus other, because when we talk about Aries, we can't help but talk about Libra. It's that axis, right, of self versus other. So we've got layer upon layer with the new moon in Aries last week and now the full moon in Libra then the nodes moving into Aries and Libra and the eclipse in Aries uh, coming up very soon so for us you know putting all of this into context <laughs> we're having to probably let go of relationships that are holding ourselves back at an individual level and you know, Libra can be very diplomatic. So there hopefully is a tone with this full moon of letting things go um, and maybe not taking it so personal because it might not be anything personal. It might simply be that you are unable to create a win-win solution or a win-win dynamic with another person because you two are, you know, on different life paths. You're, you're going in different directions in life of what each person needs for their own life purpose destiny and it's nothing personal it just is you could be at cross purposes basically and at odds um, with your values and it's not necessarily that anybody's right or wrong um, but the final analysis is that in some way it impedes your ability to grow and expand personally for you to stay in that that connection so I think an important question we have to ask ourselves right now is our relationships supporting that? Are our relationships supporting 
mutual growth and expansion for each individual involved in the relationship because this is a time where I think now more than ever we need to be making conscious connections so there's some aspects of this lunar energy that I'd like to cover uh, during this time first off we were looking at the Sun conjunct Chiron and Aries and <laughs> You know, I've been talking to for quite a while to a lot of my viewers about, you know, how many of us uh, that are 70s babies, uh, the Chiron and Aries generation, um, we're very much being triggered right now. I imagine Aries are being triggered as well. Um, and the sun there conjunct Chiron and Aries at this time are, you know, is just really putting a, a spotlight. So um, regardless of whether or not you're Aries or you're, you know, Chiron and Aries generation, look at your personal wounds, because really, I think the the energy collectively is asking us to do that. And these are wounds specifically having to do with self-worth and really saying hey look at this heal this um and that might very likely require us looking at our own personal limits our own personal weaknesses and that of others unsavory as it may be there is a spotlight on individuality and individuating from others and practicing more autonomy definitely with the south node in you know scorpio still as we speak and north node in taurus i've been saying for the last year and a half the energies have been forcing us to find our feet and here we go now with this current energy just adding another layer of you know pushing us to find our own feet so in our relationships, I think some very important questions we have to ask others is, you know, how do you need me to show up for you in this relationship versus how can I and how will I show up, you know, looking at the contrast of that and how do you need to show up for me in this relationship versus how can you and how will you actually show up for me and looking at the contrast of that with Jupiter also in Aries it's really expanding this issue further and so just be aware that anger could be associated with Aries um, but again you know there's a, an opportunity for diplomacy there with this, you know, Libra energy. So be be mindful of which route do you want to go? Do you want to be angry about the contrast in these relationships of how you need people to show up for you and they're not? Um, how they need you to show up for them and you're not <laughs> or you can't, you know? Um, or are you going to be diplomatic about it? Will you be resent resentful or will you be curious and explore possibilities? It's really your choice. You've got the ability to choose with these contrasting energies. Also with the moon and Libra, you know, opposing sun and Chiron and Aries, um, these relationship issues, yes, of course, could get emotional because like I said, there's this contrast between the emotional needs in relationships versus the personal needs for growth and expansion and healing in your life so just again another reminder try because I have to remind myself try not to take it personal it's very hard especially those of us like myself who are Chiron and Aries generation the 70s babies right it's hard for us to not take it personal um, and sometimes it is, you know, but try not to take it to heart so much because I can just tell you as a Chiron and Aries generation, this is a soul wound I've had to work through and I continue to have to talk myself through it even to this day um, because my immediate go-to with that, that childhood programming is, oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, it must be my fault. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, they don't value me. Um but we've got to strip back that programming and realize other people have their own issues and it even though it is affecting you personally 
Yeah, it might be your problem, but it's not your fault, okay? Um, and I'm, some of you already know this stuff, you don't need to be told, but um, if you're like me, Chiron and Aries generation, we really got to put it out there. All right, Neptune and Saturn and Pisces uh, could have a lot of us questioning, why am I being held back? Why am I stuck? Why can't I get free of this already? Whatever it is that you've been going through, but with Neptune there, you're not clear where the restrictions are coming from. And yeah, it could be karmic ties, obligations, bonds that bind um, from many years ago. Decisions made many, it could be decades ago, right, that you're still dealing with. Yet you're not seeing clearly the hidden forces at work in your life. And with Neptune opposing um, Ceres and Virgo, maybe what you've idealized is being challenged by your current reality. Things are not living up to your wishful, hopeful thinking, right? And Saturn and Pisces squaring part of fortune in Gemini could also mean that restrictions are challenging what you think is actually going to bless you. But does it? Did it ever? Will it ever? And the way we go after our gain and our relationships is changing because of this, because of these revelations, realizations that could be painful and quite intense. And speaking of intensity, <laughs> Pluto and Aquarius trining Cirrus, I should say, yeah. Uh, Pluto and Aquarius trining Cirrus and Virgo and part of fortune and Venus and Gemini well uh, there could be changes in relationships that encourage a more practical daily approach to nurturing yourself and others while pursuing that which blesses both parties so this could mean that some relationships end it could mean an ending to the way you relate to others and it's also a very mental energy making conscious connections and disconnections, as I mentioned earlier. You know, this could bring a restoration of relationships. But when I say restoration, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is going to get put back the way it was before. Because if the way it was before was in disrepair or neglect or misalignment again be careful what you think restoration of a relationship is it might not look like what you envision it to be just keep your mind open to that with that word restoration also pluto squaring eris and vesta in aries and the north node and mercury in taurus this could bring about changes or needed changes that unfortunately could anger you or others. So um, this could definitely come through some heated communications about needs. And um, in the final analysis, you know, the final exchange, you and maybe that other party decide that you're going to have to be more self-directed rather than other-directed. Mercury North Node and Uranus are in Taurus during this time. So I think a lot of people are going to be thinking about their values. And of course, the values are changing with Uranus there. Uh, and course corrections to those ends, right? To get into alignment with our rightful path forward. And you having to really question, are you on point with your values? Are your relationships supporting that chosen direction and that rightful path? With Mars and Pallas and Cancer, you, I think, have to ask yourself, we all do, you know, how to actively nurture and nourish something by bringing more structure and discipline and practicality into our lives, our relationships. And I am seeing a lot of masculine and feminine energy playing out with this, this, you know, Mars and Pallas and Cancer, okay, there's, there's some kind of fussy energy as well going on. And if you look at what's going on in politics about the, you know, hashtag adult 
human female. Have y'all seen that? <laughs> Adult female human, <laughs> something to that effect. Um, I, I could go on. I'm not going to go on and on and on about that woke agenda, but a lot of people um, are, are getting pretty upset. Even the LGB community is uh, getting upset about it. And so-called TERFs, T-E-R-F, uh, getting upset about, you know, what is masculine, feminine energy in its rightful place. There's a lot of fussy energy surrounding this right now where people are sorting it out. And so hopefully out of this chaos will come order <laughs> with Pallas there. Um, but I think a lot of people, even on a more individual level, regardless of politics, um, are finding themselves in situations where they're asking themselves, you know, about the proper order of things. Uh, what is feminine? What is masculine? How can I embrace my femininity uh, or my masculinity, whatever it is that you authentically are, okay? And realizing that when a person has to be both a man and the woman in a dynamic, whether it's a family dynamic, a um, romantic dynamic, uh, you, you just end up failing miserably at both. And so I think society is really working through this. Hopefully, um, palace in cancer is, is helping it because right. Mars is also a lot of sexual energy as well. Cancer is having to do with nurturing, nourishing, uh, but it's also a very feminine energy. And with palace there, it's bringing that masculine energy, that contrast. So, uh, palace in cancer is squaring this moon in Libra. Um, it's bringing about a lot of um, challenge in these male-female relationships. And yeah, society is kind of maybe getting angry about it. We're seeing on you know the news, on Twitter, riots um, with, you know, especially, you know, not to get too deep into it, but right, we just had a transgender massacre in Tennessee. And um, that's hit the news. So you know, if personally, it's left me with a question of how do men nurture relationships or support women in being nurturers in the home or family or, you know, romantic relationship? How do they do that without losing their authentic masculine energy? Because we've been seeing, you know, now we're seeing a lot of drag queens getting banned. Um, that's here in Texas where I'm from. And had me asking, honestly, as I'm watching this, as I'm observing, I'm thinking to myself, you know, why can't men show up as fathers to children anymore? Why must men dress like women in order to relate to children these days? Uh, we've got an epidemic of fatherlessness and women, no offense, make terrible fathers and vice versa. I'm sorry to say, I know it's not politically correct, but it's true. And it's probably going to piss some people off here. But you know what? That's the energy. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I couldn't be the best mother I needed to be when I had to be the father and the mother in my home. And that's just like, let's keep it real here. And we as a society on a collective level and also on an individual and a relational level, we need to sort this out. And I think the energy is pushing us to do this. Final aspect I want to mention is we've got Black Moon Lilith and Leo during this time. So it is bringing about this energy of wanting attention, even if it's bad attention, even if it's a negative attention. And with it squaring Juno and Uranus and Taurus, there is an intense drive and desire to pursue what you want and a willingness to do what it takes to get it. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up on that note and encourage you to release some things that are not in alignment for you right now and find your feet and restore relations, have conscious connections, and sometimes that means you're going to have to consciously disconnect so you can align with people 
who are supporting you in your growth and expansion, painful as that may be. Wishing you guys all the best. I hope you enjoyed the views in this video. Next time I will be showing you video from Austin, Texas, God willing. Y'all have a beautiful full moon in Libra, a healing one. And remember, if you need a private reading, reach out to me. Links are down in the comments below. Be blessed.